What it do, what it do, what it do, I'm a jammo, I'm a jammo, I'm a jammo, and you're not. I don't know if that's a good thing. It depends on your subjectivity. Oh yeah. Uh, hold on, wait, are we recording? Oh, okay, hold on. Wait, let me get my game face on. Take a sip of martini. Oh, slurp it up. Oh, it's so good. Okay, I'm ready. What do you think of my compadre when you hear the word pie? A nice crumbly cherry pie, perhaps. Or maybe a Thanksgiving pie filled to the brim with pumpkiny goodness. Or maybe you just picture the land of freedom, strip malls and burgers, good old apple pie and baseball America. Or another option, I hazard a guess a few nerds amongst you conjured to mind the symbology slash numerology, the 3.14 a blargity blargity trailing off into an infinite spiral. But for the truly blessed and cursed among you, the wild-eyed travelers of cinematic weirdness, there is only one answer. The film, of course. The Darren Aronofsky-directed black-and-white mathematical madhouse that still stands today as one of my all-time favorites. The story is about a man named Max Cohen, a paranoid mathematical genius attempting to figure out the nature of life and the universe through mathematics. Specifically, he thinks that everything in nature can be predicted if he finds the right number or equation, and further believes that the epitome of this fundamental nature is exemplified by the stock market. I know that sounds wild, and it is, but it makes some amount of narrative sense because the stock market is expressed numerically if you see what I'm saying. So essentially, Max thinks if he predicts the stock market, he's found the pattern of life. I could probably explain this better if I were more versed in math and science, but alas, I am but a simple poet. Anyway, so Max is working late at night, chugging Coca-Colas and boofing caffeine suppositories when his wacky homemade computer has a conniption, spits out a string of 216 numbers, oi, and has a meltdown. Max gets pissed and throws the number away, but soon learns that a lot of people are after that number. Some Jewish mystics think it's the number of God. A corporation wants the number for monetary purposes, cause corporations gonna be corporations, right? And Max is now the centrifugal force for a psychotic narrative where his own mad delusions coincide with real danger on all sides. And that's just the surface of the film. I left out many details, just giving you the broad strokes. To me, the whole numerology element is interesting, but it's more of a framing device to explore the nature of obsession, and how true obsession can blossom, like a black little mind flower into paranoia and madness. There's a secondary theme quietly woven in here that's just as important, and it's the theme of rest and perspective, a counterpoint to obsessive tendencies. Max is continually told by his old teacher to take a break. A breakdown will come, but you need to chill your balls, Maxie boy. But Max doesn't listen, and the film itself, even the filmmaking style, is consumed by his growing madness until nobody is sure what's real anymore. Now, I wanted to talk about Pi not only because it's an interesting film, but because it's a very important film for me. When I was just a zesty young bloodhound of a man, age 19, or so, wandering my hometown streets on LSD with my compatriots, we would often come back and put this movie on. I carried the DVD around with me. It was my OG weirdo freakout film. I somehow found it even before I knew about David Lynch. I have no idea how. This was back when you had to rent or buy movies, you know, so you just kind of had to find stuff. And it's been like a solid, I don't know, 12 years or so since I last seen it, so I wanted to see how it holds up. And so here we are. And the answer is yes, it holds up with a little catch. It's still a great film, but I think the shock of it has lessened a bit thanks to my own obsession with weirdo cinema in the intervening years. I've seen everything from David Lynch, Lars von Trier, John Waters, Yorgos Lanthimos, fucking the holy mountain, the all-time godfather of gonzo cinema, and the whole galaxy of strange things besides. So it's a matter of perspective, right? I had never seen any Anything like Pi when I was a teenager and it was a stepping stone for me into the world of wacko movies and I will forever love it for that and the fact that I can still be drawn into the distinct feeling that the film creates the consuming and mounting drone of paranoia and madness 
is a testament to how well crafted it is. In the modern era, with the perspective of time and a fuller knowledge of the cinematic world, I'm gonna say this deserves a place on the all-time weirdo movie shelf. I think it's one of Darren Aronofsky's best films, and I can fully, without reservation, recommend it to anybody who likes freaky arthouse movies. And that's Pi! Quick recommendation, quick video. Love it to death, man. Go ahead and gobble it up. Grab a buddy and head down the rabbit hole together. It would make a great double feature with a racer head. And let us know how your night went if you do that. Thanks for watching. I don't know where we're going next or when. Could be tomorrow, could be a month from now. But in any case, be well out there in the insanity of this world. Don't forget to take a break and chill your balls. I recommend yoga personally, and I'll catch you later.